Welcome to Automation Chat. I'm your host, Teresa Hauk, Executive Editor of the Journal for Rockwell Automation and our Partner Network Magazine. Today, we're joined by Alan Rentcom, CEO at Sensia. We're going to talk about how the economic downturn has affected the oil and gas industry, if and how oil and gas companies are investing, the role digital technologies will play in the next five to 10 years, how to get meaningful views into real-time production data, and much more information that's going to be useful to you. So we'll get started in a minute, but first, it's time for our family-friendly, silly joke of the day. Oh, I like this one. This is another math one. Why was the equal sign so humble? Because he knew he wasn't greater than or less than anyone else. <laughs> All right, now let's talk with Alan. Welcome, Alan. Thanks for joining me today. Hi, good morning. So we've got some really important and interesting topics to cover, so we'll we'll dive right in. But let me start with, um, tell me how the idea of Sensia was developed and um, how does your firm's joint venture with Rockwell Automation work? Yeah, sure, great. And, uh, and again, good morning. Um, you know, uh, Sensia was the outgrowth of uh, Slumberger and Rockwell realizing there was a, a gap in the marketplace when it came to how we support uh, sort of digital transformation for our customers. You know, Rockwell is you know a very well respected uh, industrial automation company, but didn't necessarily have all the petrotechnical domain expertise to kind of uh, solve some of those challenges in oil and gas. Equally, uh, uh, Slumberger had no automation experience. Um, and so the idea was, how do we somehow combine uh, world-class automation with core oil and gas domain expertise with some common technologies to drive, to drive uh, sort of solving problems for our customers? And, and that's why Sensia was formed. And it sounds like it's a really powerful venture. Um, and you've got a lot of knowledge. So tell me, talk about the current economic downturn has really affected the oil and gas industry. Um, talk about the ways the oil and gas industry, the companies have been impacted and including how COVID has affected the industry. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a very relevant question. And I think, unfortunately, in oil and gas, there was sort of a, a double whammy, if you will. There was the impact on the economy as a result of uh, the pandemic. And then there were the ongoing issues with uh, production quotas that were being set uh, by OPEC and uh, some of the issues that that created. So we had two, two circumstances that created this perfect storm that really fundamentally impacted uh, the energy sector. Uh, with regards to the pandemic, um, we created this uh, sort of um, uh, imbalance in supply and demand. You had uh, you know, a lot less folks going to work. Uh, you know, we're doing this podcast here from our home bases and uh, I would normally be in the office. I, I, I can't remember the last time I filled up my, my, my car with gas, right? <laughs> so we see this, we see this impact on, on, on demand uh, as a result of the pandemic. And then we see um, the impact of uh, overproduction that occurred uh, uh, in the previous, uh, in the spring. And, and those two things combined has really put a pressure on the performance of, uh, of the energy companies. That's a lot. So with all these things going on, and there's always something pressuring the industry, how do you think um, the operations are going to change in the next five to 10 years? Yeah, and no, how, I, and how will the digital, that's right, how will digital technologies play a role in that? Yeah, I, I, look, I think even pre-pandemic, there was a realization by many companies that they had to do something different to streamline you know, their operational cost, their OPEX per barrel. Um, there were other factors that were occurring around sort of declining and aging workforces and transferring of knowledge and moving away from a sort of a, 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 a workforce where the knowledge is in one individual to more of a centric centralized digital enabled workforce right. so i think some of these things were happening um I, I think there were some changes in technology that allowed these things to happen in a more cost effective way over the last five years um, but i think the result of the pandemic has just uh, made uh, the ability to accelerate or forcing companies to think about accelerating some of those initiatives uh, in their sort of digital transformation journey yeah because a slowdown can be a time to focus on 
these kind of opportunities. Yeah, yeah I think so. I, I think, you know, you look at a lot of the major national oil companies and oil field services companies, and uh, you've seen them reduce their workforces in line with their, their revenue and, and outlook uh, for the coming quarters. And that forces them to rethink, you know, how they can optimize their operations. Um, and just driving, you know, a couple of pennies or a few cents of, of OPEX reduction per barrel uh, can have a very large impact, uh, particularly on some of the more independent uh, operators who, who work at very, very razor thin margins, right? Mm -hmm. So t talking about specific kinds of digital technologies, can you describe how the cloud and mobility and especially analytics can yeah. provide an, what we call an actionable view into real-time production data so users can see what's coming before an issue becomes a real problem? Sure. No, I think that's a great question. And I think, you know, before we talk about analytics, there's actually some things that have to happen before those analytics can really be used. And you know, one of the challenges, particularly in oil and gas, and it's a little bit different, let's say, from the factory floor or an automotive production facility, you know, the oil and gas environment is a lot harsher and the processes are a lot more dynamic. So the key to leveraging analytics in a digital transformation is having high quality data to start with. And so there is so much data available in a production environment in oil and gas. Much of that data is not in context. It's, uh, it's not properly contextualized, so it can be referenced and used in an analytics engine. Um, and so the starting point is to make sure that all your assets are properly connected uh, and that data from those assets is in context. And often that's overlooked. There's this desire to jump to that sort of analytics engine or that, or that uh, analytics application that will give us this sort of insight into your, into your processes and where you can reduce, uh, reduce uh, maybe spend. But in order to do that and to make that an effective process, you need to have really good data. So I think the first step is making sure that customers understand that they've got to connect to their assets and get quality data, number one. Number two, then it's kind of analyzing and figuring out where are the areas in my production that benefit from some kind of digitization. Because I don't think it's a case of applying this across every single process. Right. But I think having a very scalable approach to your digital journey is very important. So some customers are smaller companies that have no connectivity today, no analytics. Very small changes in their processes can, could yield a big result. For much larger companies, you know, there's so many different pieces in their processes, so analyzing where they can get the best bang for their buck uh, takes a much longer time. And it's, it's that sort of analysis first and the connecting of data that drives the sort of decisions around which type of analytics are needed. Now, once you've done those things, then sure, you can pick the right workflows, you can look at workforce enablement, you can you know, make sure that you're driving those processes and automating manual processes that are taking a lot of time and adding to your operational costs. But it starts with that kind of hard legwork of connectivity and assessment. Yeah, and it's that one size fits all. That makes perfect sense. And that, that means you and Rockwell and all the other partners with Rockwell aren't trying to sell the whole deal to everyone. Right. Really looking at smart solutions for each customer. Yeah, I think that's really important. You know, and I come from the Rockwell sort of uh, side of the joint venture, you know, and Rockwell's always said, you know, there's not one company that can do it all. So you have to have partners and you have to understand who your digital partners are. And I think, uh, in my current role, you know, it's the same philosophy. You know, we have a great foundation, but we need to rely on our partners to help us with some of those uh, solutions as we work with customers to assess what their needs are. Yeah, and that's where the joint venture works well. Yeah. Now, another uh, key thing that's important in the industry is security in the oil and gas industry. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's a great, it's a very uh, uh, appropriate and relevant question because, you know, it's sort of a double-edged sword. The more that you connect to things, the more that you start to get insights to data, the more exposed you are to uh, bad actors and, the, and the nefarious actions that could damage your operations. And so I think, uh, you know, security is an incredibly important part of not only the products that uh, an organization sells, but also how they are operational and delivery process are structured around protecting the customer's data. 
you know, we're, we're, we're often involved in looking at sensitive information, production data, information that is quite uh, important to uh, a, a customer to protect from their competition. And so making sure that not only do your products have layers of protection, but your engineering and delivery processes have appropriate levels of uh, security processes. Um, like Rockwell, uh, we are looking at adopting areas of 62443, the IEC standard. Um, and uh, we are leveraging, of course, Rockwell as a parent company, their activities in this space. Um, and all of the new technologies that you know, Sensia produces are all compliant uh, with a basic requirement for security as part of the overall design criteria. Oh, that's great. And um, in this day and age, it's, you cannot be too secure. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, you know, you, every time you turn the TV on, there's there's some hack, there's some phishing attack, there's some ransomware that's going out there. And, and you know, and, uh, as an individual, you kind of put those things in your in your trash can and move on. But when when it's a more targeted attack, when you can start to you know influence uh, an energy company's uh, performance, or you can do something even worse around you know safety, that's the big problem. So yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, you have a lot of background in this industry. What's one key thing you want viewers to know and listeners to know about the oil and gas automation technology? Yeah, it's a great question. And I, you know, thinking about it, there's so many different mm -hmm. things we could focus on. But you know, I, I, I think when, as a company, you think about digital automation, I think it's really important that you find a partner that can scale uh, solutions to meet your needs. Because everybody's digital journey, not only is it different, but they're all starting from a different point of view and a different point in that journey. And I think there are lots of you know, large corporations that do consulting services, they consult and they move on. But I think as a company, if I was uh, looking to adopt digital automation as part of my uh, focus on operational expense reduction, you, you need to find somebody that understands your business and understands where you are on that journey to help you get to whatever your, your level of comfort is. And it's different for an Exxon as it is for a guy in West Texas. And, and, and understanding those needs and what it takes to get to that level of transformation is quite different. And so, I, I would just encourage customers to think about who they should partner with to help them on that journey. Well, that's good advice. And as we wrap up here, I have to ask, I, I know Sensia recently had a one year anniversary. So yes. congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, as you look back on the, on the last year, how do you feel um, what you've accomplished? How do you feel about what you've accomplished for your customers? Yeah, well, the first thing I would say that, first of all, joint ventures are hard. <laughs> that, that, that I would definitely say. And, uh, you know, having two very strong parents um, <laughs> is, uh, is, is, uh, is been interesting, but very rewarding. And I think um, what we've been able to do as Sense here is to translate, you know, the, the very best of uh, both of our parents, uh, whether it's automation, industrial automation, or petrotechnical knowledge. We've been able to channel that uh, sort of that, that, that pedigree through Sensia to our customers. And I think what our customers are realizing is that Sensia offers a very scalable approach to, to their digital journey. And, and I think it's resonating. And they are, they are, you know, we've had a bit of a detour with the pandemic and, and a few other things that I've got in our way. And, uh, and, it, and it certainly allowed us as a, as a young leadership team to, to rally around some common issues that we've been able to carefully navigate through. And, and I think it shows in a way that we work with our customers and our customers' loyalty to us has been fantastic as, we, uh, as we've uh, kind of started our journey. Well, that's great to hear. Um, this has been a great discussion. I appreciate you joining us. Thank you, Alan. Um, and listeners, be sure to uh, look at your episode description on the podcast or the YouTube description for a link to Sensia's website, as well as some other resources. Um, this has been Automation Chat, and I'm Teresa Houck. Now, if you enjoy this, you can also subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify, and you can share it with your colleagues, one of your favorite episodes. Uh, thanks for listening, and thanks again, Alan, and we will chat soon. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you.